For Terry Pendleton, before becoming nationally MVP uh, and furthering his star with the Braves, there were seven great years in St. Louis. He was right in the middle of the success that these teams had. And Terry, good enough to join us on the Friday Stove. TP, TP. good morning. Good morning, good morning. Hey, what's the first thing you think of when I ask you about those teams that you began your career with in St. Louis? It would probably, <clears throat> excuse me, it would probably be um, going through the minor league system, believe it or not. You, you, know, you think about the teams and, and the, the way we played there, but I think our minor league system got us all set up uh, for us that came through the system, got us all set up to play in the big leagues. And I think that's the biggest thing that the, uh, I think about I think about those those early mornings and late afternoons in the instructional league and George Kissel beating up on all of us and and uh, us coming to a realization of why he was doing what he was doing to us and helping us all to be better uh, baseball players to help our organization. So I would definitely have to say it started in the minor leagues and worked its way up and that's where I'd probably um, say that's where it all started. That's, that'd be the first thing I think of. And the the first thing I think of Terry uh, is all the switch hitters. I mean, I, I, I wrote down right now, I think you guys had seven switch hitters on that team at mm -hmm. one time. That's a good one. Um, I you? remember six. You may have gotten you for one more. But, uh, you know, it's funny you say that. I remember a story. Um, uh, when I first got to the big leagues, I walk into the clubhouse, and, you know, you walk around, you look around, and uh, I'm the only one there. And uh, the equipment manager, Buddy Bass, walks over to me and shows me, well, this is your locker because your jersey's hanging up in it. And then he asked me what helmet size I wore. And then uh, he asked me if I was a switch hitter. Yes. So he brings me out two helmets, a lefty and a righty helmet. And I look at him puzzled and Buddy's standing there looking at me like, kid, what's wrong? What's going on? And I say to him, uh, excuse me, sir, do you, do you mind if I have a double ear flap helmet? And he goes, what? Double <laughs> ears? You're in the big leagues, kid. You want a double ear flap helmet? And I go, yes, I do. If, if it's okay, if it's, you know, not against the rules or no, it's not going to piss anybody off. Yes, I'd like a double ear flap helmet. Then he looks at me and goes, hey, uh, can you get the rest of them to wear them too? Because if you think about it, with, <laughs> with all the guys we had there, I mean, he's carrying around one bag for six or seven guys with just helmets in it because uh, the the um, guys switch hitting. But eventually everybody went to Ozzy and Tommy here were uh, grandfathered in with the no ears. Yeah. And uh, Willie McGee, myself, Vince Coleman, Jose Okendo, we all went to double ear flap, so it, it helped Buddy Bates out a lot. I forgot about Okendo. Yeah, that's another one. I had, you know, Vince yeah. Coleman obviously came around. I had you, right. Ozzy, Willie McGee, her. Mm hmm. Uh, oh, I wrote down Ted Simmons, but you didn't play with Ted. Ted was probably. No, was Ted, Ted was by then. Yeah, Ted was gone. He, he, I think Ted had gone to the Brewers. He was gone when I got there. We had Daryl Porter as our catcher when I got there. Okay. Hey, Terry, if, if in fact, the, uh, the oversimplification of those teams is just, you know, whitey fundamentals and a bunch of guys that ran, what, what are the layers of that team's success that aren't talked about enough? Because there were power hitters in the lineup that, you, as a team, you didn't hit for power so much. But what else was responsible for the success there? I think us depending and relying and uh, pushing each other to be the best we could be every day. I think our work ethic. When I got there, uh, after I, Ozzie Smith was hurt, he had, he had uh, messed up his thumb when I got there, and Chris Spire was a shortstop. But when Ozzie got healthy, I had to go out and work every day. I was a third baseman. I went out and worked every day, but I had to beat Ozzie Smith out on the field every day. I couldn't show up behind him when he walked out there to work. I had to be out there when he got there. So it was just those types of things. Your, your teammates relied on you making sure that you were getting your work done and uh, they held you responsible when you didn't do so. And they let you know about it. And I think that was an even bigger thing for us. We knew how to play the game of baseball, but we were going to make sure we were doing it the way that Whitey wanted it and, and our teammates wanted us to play. Hey, Terry, with playing next to Ozzy, and he was so great, his range, his ability to get to so many things, how did you guys split the left side of the infield? What was your conversation? Well, I basically went off what Mr. Smith wanted done, to be <laughs> honest with you. Um, well, but, but Ozzy started playing more toward the middle because my, my range left and right, I had pretty good range both ways, but my range left was really good. And Ozzy recognized that. So he moved more toward the middle, and it helped us out. Uh, it helped us uh, be able to cover more ground out there for sure. Um, but... The uh, the bigger thing was uh, me getting to know him. 
I wouldn't say him getting to know me because he went over behind me and caught balls. And he caught, he caught one ball one evening. I didn't think he was going to even get to. And as he catches a ball, he's diving, he's getting up, and he's hollering at me, you better stay down because I didn't think he'd catch the ball. And uh, he's about to hit me in the back of the head with it. So, uh, you know, he still shows some, some different things and ranges that I didn't realize that he, he had. Uh, but I learned this over time work, uh, working and playing with him. Terry, watching those clips, and the first thing that pops for me is that doggone AstroTurf you guys had to deal with. Mm. And the turf at Bush Stadium was legendary in the summer for the kind of heat that it would create. And we've heard all kinds of great stories about how you dealt with the heat and frozen cabbage leaves under your cap on, <laughs> on top of your head. Did y'all really do that? What else did you guys do to deal uh, with that? Yeah, we did, but I can honestly sit here and tell you none of it worked. I don't care what they tell you. None of it worked. We were out on the turf. We were out on the turf one evening against the Dodgers. It was 148 degrees on the turf. And you could literally look out of the dugout at the third baseman over there, and you knew there's a guy standing there, but if you didn't know the player, you couldn't tell anybody who he was. That's how much heat was coming off the turf. In between pitches, I'm standing in the dirt. Pitcher gets ready to pitch. I'm running back to my position. That's how hot it got. We we stood in, you know, guys would stand in um, uh, ice buckets, you know, yeah. before you get out. And before the first out is made out on the field, your feet are drip dry again anyway. I mean, they're just different things that you try. You know, you go in there and drink everything cold you can possibly drink. It didn't matter. I mean, the the cabbage in the in the uh, in the hat, the helmet, none of that mattered. It lasts for about 20 seconds with that heat out there, and then it would dissipate. So I think the toughest part was if you had something and you had to go back up in the clubhouse for it, you didn't go back up in that clubhouse because if you went up there in that air conditioning, you you wouldn't come back down for the rest of the game. <laughs> Seriously. So if there was something needed, the bat boy was running upstairs. I think those days, you know, we all thought it was tough on us, but the hardest working person out there was the bat boys, believe it or not. Golly. So with all those teams and the explosiveness of speed and everything else, what was the most exciting play that you saw happen? That kind of I'll give you a, a personal example. When Willie McGee came to the American League, he was playing mm -hmm. for Oakland. And I'm in Seattle, and obviously, you know, American League and National League didn't play each other in those days. Pass right. ball, and he was on second. He scored from second. I mean, I didn't realize Willie McGee was that fast. It was unbelievable. Yeah. The speed he had. And I'd seen Ricky, Bo, all those guys. Willie could fly. So well, I'm asking you that with that that in mind. He's he, he's done that. We've had a number of players do that, you know, it, it um, from second to home on a pass ball. We've had a number of players go from first to third on a pass ball, stealing on a pass ball. So um, I think a, a couple of things that stick in mind would be Willie and Vince. I think you guys showed a little clip of you showed the tail end of it of Willie and Vince stealing two bases in one pitch in in Chicago, um, showing how fast they both both were. Willie uh, Vince slid off the bag and got in a rundown, and the Cubs messed it up, and Vince scored, and Willie ended up at third on one pitch. And most kids will go, "How's that done?" Go back and look at the clips. It's probably on YouTube somewhere. Check it out. Uh, these guys were fast, but we always talked about speed and and how to gain that extra step or two on everybody. But I'd have to agree with you when you talk about speed because Willie McGee, I don't think I've ever seen anybody go from home to third as fast as Willie McGee could do so. And I've watched Deion Sanders run who could fly, and I watched Bo Jackson run who could fly. And I'm telling you, from home to third, Willie would give any of them a great race. Hey, Terry, wow. really great having you on the program. Thanks for some of the memories of those great Cardinal teams, and uh, we look forward to visiting with you again. Thanks for the time today. All right, thank you guys for having me.